So um, I said today's chapter is the nutrition, right? Nutrition means the food like carbohydrate, protein, fat or mineral vitamins we eat. After eat, the food is undergo the digestive system. And finally, the small particles of the food go to the metabolic change and produce the energy. Overall, this is called the nutrition. If you make it easy, then nutrition is the nutrition definition of the nutrient it is the process where the food particles break down and produce the energy right so in this chapter we are just going to talk about the food particles like carbohydrate protein lipid with different kind of vitamin micronutrient and also macronutrient. All of this we are going to talk. In the first uh, page in this chapter, they're talking about the body mass index, shortly called BMI. BMI, right? Another terminology you have to know, this is called BMR means basal metabolic rate. One is called BMI, means body mass index. Other is called basal metabolic rate, two different terminology. Both we are going to talk. First of all, the body mass index, what it is we are going to discuss this first, right? And also we are going to talk how calculate the BMI, right? So body mass index definition, a mean of measuring the obesity that uses a formula along with an individual's weight and height to calculate whether him or her is fitness, obese or underweight like this. So in this is the formula, how we have to calculate the BMI. The formula is here, weight in pound, this is the unit, times or multiply seven, 103 over or divided by height, but height units should be inches and square also. So my friend, it is very important. BMI formula is this, but unit is important. So if patient unit mentioning in KZ, we have to convert it to the pound. If the height is mentioned or expressed by the foot or feet, we have to convert it to inches, right? So here, first of all, weight, we have to change always in the pound. And also height. What is the height? We have to convert to inches and square over it. So if you ask what is 703, this is the formula. The scientists use this formula to find out BMI. As an example here, for example, if your weight is 155 pound and your height is five feet 11 inches, how much BMI? So body weight is 150 pound. It, it should be go top. Multiply 703 and divided by height. Height is five foot 11 inches. Five feet has to convert it to the inches 
plus 11 inches. So there are 12 inches is equal to one feet or foot. So 12 multiply five plus 11, it is 71 inches. And it is showing, formula showing the square. So 71 square, it should be 5,041. So this number, if you divide it by 5,041, it would become 21.5. So now question come, what are the normal range of BMI? What are the normal range, right? So BMI normal range is called 18.5 to 24.9 is the normal. If anybody's BMI less than 18.5, it, it does mean they are underweight. They need more food. So underweight always BMI is less than 18.5. So if your BMI is 18.5 to 24.9, it indicate you are healthy person, right? But if in your BMI is 25 more, and less than 29.9, it, it indicate you are overweight, overweight. You have to reduce your weight. If the BMI is more than 30, it means you are obese. Because obesity can cause so many diseases, right? Obesity can cause so many diseases. So if you are obese, you have to reduce your body weight, right? But how you have to do it? Just calculate the BMI. Another terminology I said we have to know for NCLEX board, this is called BMR, means basal metabolic rate. So, Basically, BMR means the energy required for involuntary activities in the body within a 24 hour period. For example, heart function or respiration or temperature regulation. So basically our body need energy to do the function okay, to do the function. So basal metabolic rate or BMI, we have to know what are the normal range and when it is increased and when it is decreased, both are important, have to know. So in some condition, uh, BMI is increased. In relation to the man and female, male gender, BMI usually increase, or the person who use more muscle, increase the muscle mass, BMI increase. If any traits or period of growth, I mean childhood or puberty, BMR increase. Some of the disease like hypothyroidism, BMR increase sepsis, septicemia, burn, cancer, fever, and surgical condition, usually BMR increase. And other medical condition when decrease the BMR, and I said men and female, female gender, BMR is less than men, also the short stature, the people who is a little bit shorter, their BMR is decreased. Less muscle power or starvation, older age, BMR is reduced or less, right? So I'm just going back the first phase here, then go for the two terminology here. One is called 
complex carbohydrate, complex carbohydrate and digestion. Complex carbohydrate means the type of carbohydrate that are made of a stretch or fiber. So <clears throat> carbohydrate basically is simple carbohydrate like a sugar. And when more than two carbohydrate is make a complex, this is called a complex carbohydrate, but both are carbohydrate. Carbohydrate should make up, should make up 45 to 50, 65% of calorie in our food, in our dietary habit. So what is digestion? Digestion is the process by which food is broken down in the GIT and release the nutrient for metabolism. Metabolism occur inside the liver and produce the energy as the ATP, right? So if we go next phase here, here we say, I said the carbohydrate is simple, one is called simple carbohydrate, right? Simple carbohydrate. So complex and simple. Simple carbohydrate, also known as the simple sugar. This type of carbohydrate is chemically made up of one or two sugar molecules together, right? And make the complex carbohydrate. The normal function of the carbohydrate in the body, they provide energy, they regulate the fat and protein metabolism, and also important for cardiac and central nervous system function, right? When carbohydrate, like you eat too much carbohydrate, the carbohydrate when we eat too much, the carbohydrate store in the body is a glycogen, glycogen. So the storage carbohydrate energy in the liver and muscle. And when body need, they release the sugar. So release in between meal or maintain the blood glucose level. Okay, so basically, carbohydrate provide four uh, kilocalorie per gram. Okay, so what next? Nitrogen balance. What is the nitrogen balance here? So nitrogen balance, this you see, a balance between the amount of nitrogen ingested in the form of protein, the level of nitrogen utilized by the body and nitrogen excess removed from the body by the kidney, right? So here we said the, first of all, nitrogen balance, why, why we need to know the nitrogen balance, why we need to know, Okay, so nitrogen balance. First of all, nitrogen is the compound of amino acid. What is amino acid? Amino acid is the small molecule of the protein. So nitrogen is the component of amino acid, usually amino acid found in the protein. Nitrogen balance, means nitrogen intake minus nitrogen excrete from the body. How much nitrogen you are taking and how much nitrogen excrete from the body. Usually the adult should have a neutral nitrogen balance. There are two terminology coming next pages. It's called positive nitrogen balance and also called the negative nitrogen balance. 
positive nitrogen balance occur during the period of growth like childhood puberty pregnancy or lactation and negative nitrogen balance is occur or indicate insufficient protein intake or any illness male nutrition or malnutrition aging process right or patient if using the protein faster than it is being synthesized that condition is called negative nitrogen balance so now here talking about the classification of nutrient the classification of nutrient like the major classification is a macronutrient and micronutrient so macro means bigger and micro means smaller right so first of all we state the macronutrient okay so macronutrient means uh, basically protein, carbohydrate, or fat. All is called macronutrient. Water is macronutrient. Some minerals like sodium, potassium, calcium, or phosphorus are minerals. different vitamin like water soluble vitamin or fat soluble vitamin all vitamin are micronutrient or some are called trace molecules some are called trace molecule like iodine zinc fluorine right or iron they are micronutrient they are trace minerals basically micro but trace mineral and here go next here so oh something important if i take or if i eat one gram of protein one gram of protein one gram of protein produce four kilocalorie energy hmm? and protein should make up 10 to 35 percent of calories in the body if you ask me what are the function of this protein the function of protein they support the tissue building they help in metabolism or immune function or the protein maintain the nitrogen balance the important for wound healing the important for wound healing also protein is two category one is the complete protein others called incomplete protein so what you have to know for NCLEX board exam, the protein provide four kilocalorie or four calories per gram of energy. This is super important. If anybody of deficiency of protein, deficiency of protein, they developed the, some of the disease and this is called quashiocor or marasmus. This is the quashiocoron marasmus is the deficiency of protein. Okay, so now I'm going a short um, review about the another one. It is, uh, let me see, simple. Okay, the carbohydrate. So the carbo, we are coming in the next phase again. The carbohydrate produce a four kilocalo per gram. And carbohydrate should make up usually 45 to 65% of the calorie. 
the function of carbohydrate, they provide energy, regulate the fat and protein metabolism like protein. Also, they are important for cardiac function. They are important for central nervous system because your brain only eat sweet things, sugar or glucose. Your brain likes glucose. Testes like sweet things. They like fructose or glucose. Okay. And again, I said when we take too much carbohydrate, they deposit in the body as a glycogen. And carbs are provide four kilocalorie per gram. Right. Sometimes NPLEX board asks the recommendation of fiber intake in including the carbohydrate, 25 gram per day for women and 38 gram per day for the men. What about the fat? Fat, other term is called lipid, right? So fat, basically the fat provide nine calories or kilocalories per gram of energy. So fat should make, make up 20 to 35% of calories. The function of fat, they store the energy for the body and provide the insulation or also important for hormone production, absorption of fat soluble vitamin, absorption of fat soluble vitamin. I said, usually the cholesterol or cholesterol should be limited to 200 to 300 milligram per day because cholesterol also part of fat, right? So now you, if I go the next, I said minerals, defined minerals we use, vitamins like B complex, then vitamin A, D, C, E, and C, they are vitamin and trace elements. I told you the trace element is called iodine, like here, I said um, iodine, shortly called I2, iodine, or we use, or we said fluorine, fluorine, okay? It is F-L-O-U-R, or fluoride, basically, or zinc. This is the micronutrient or trace element or most important is the iron. Most important is the iron. They are trace element. The iodine that use used to synthesize the thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone, iodine is important component of thyroid hormone. Like salt, what are the salt we, eat, we take during the food? I mean, dinner or lunch, is the source of iodine, like fluoride. Fluoride protect again the cavities. The source is the water. The zinc is very important for your immune system. The source of the zinc are not meat or fortified cereal or beans. And I said the iron is super important. The function of the iron used to make a hemoglobin. What are the source of iron? The source of iron are meat, fish, some legumes or gains. But keep in mind, if you eat too much iron, they causes the constipation. A question usually board asks, what are the vitamin name? 
can increase the iron absorption in the body? Answer is vitamin C. So vitamin C increase the absorption of iron, okay? But vitamin C also decrease the calcium absorption. So next here, uh, they said dietary guidelines for America. What are the dietary guidelines for America here? So the dietary guidelines for America, three, uh, first of all, three area emphasizing one is the eat in moderation, eat only the amount required for activities, and also eat more nutrient rich, okay? Also the, the food should be loaded with nutrient. So the dietary guideline for Americans basically eat five or more serving of fruit fruits or veggies per day. Also choose the monosaturated or polysaturated fat. And our goal should be, our goal is to eat less than 7% from saturated fat. And also we have to consume less than 2,500 milligram per day of salt or sodium and up to one drink per day for women and two drinks per day for the men. This is the basic information about the guidelines. I mean, nutrition, uh, dietary guidelines for America. They said reduce the saturation fat less than 10%, reduce the calorie consumption from solid fat or sugar, also reduce the sodium intake to 1,300 milligram per day. And also for the African-American, they had a chance of heart disease, they have a chance of develop renal disease, their target should be less than 1500 milligram for those who elevated the blood pressure, diabetic or renal disease like African-American. And what next about the dietary habit here? Consume more whole gains, also use the reduced fat dietary product, increase the, I say eat five or more serving of fruits or veggies per day. And one is the important, it's called my plate. So my plate is here. You can see my plate. So in the my plate, half of the plate is covered by fruits. Half of the plate should be occupied by the vegetables half of the plate occupied by the gains and half should be by the protein. And this is called my plate. So, so the digestive system, when we eat something in, when we eat and put something in the mouth, there are some gland, it's called salivary gland. The salivary gland, secreted some saliva and food is get a solid because of the saliva and they break down to little bit small pieces because of chewing. After that, or that the food is passing through the esophagus and food is come in the stomach. So stomach is a Resorber, same time, some of the partial digestion take place. And there are so many secretion occur in the stomach as well. Stomach contain hydrochloric acid. So the organism, what bring with the food, they basically die 
inside the stomach. When food in the second part of duodenum, there are so many glandular secretion like pancreas secret amylase, lipase, gallbladder secret the gall bile, I mean bile, also liver secret some hormone. All of them food, partial digest food is completely digest. After the digestion, the big molecules make a small molecules so that the small molecule can absorb from intestine to the blood. So when food is go through the small intestine, this is the small intestine, the most important elements are reabsorbed. After reabsorption, the food is passing by the large intestine, where the most of the water is reabsorbed in your body. And waste materials is going through the terminal portion of large intestine. And in the rectum, basically, or last terminal part of large intestine, the fecal materials or stool is made. The rectum, basically, the reservoir of the stool. And when patient is desire, they defecate and waste materials is go, going out. All of this system, basically, the digestive system. Right, so what here they wrote, I'm going to read with you. So digestive system begins in the mouth with amylase working on fat and carbohydrate, but this amylase secreted from pancreas. Mechanical chewing and break down the size of big particles of food to smaller Pieces. Esophagus is the transport the food from mouth to the stomach by a process is called peristalsis. Keep in mind that young people peristalsis is rapid or more. So they can eat more, their defecation is better. But the, because of aging process, when we became older, our pestalsis activities go down. So we do not digest better than the young people. And also defecation is less. Patient develop constipation. This is the reason we say elderly patient need to mobilize, ambulating. After any kind of major surgery, we used to help the patient to ambulating. Why? To prevent the constipation by increasing peristalsis. Carbohydrate is converted to Maltose or sucrose. This is the defined form of glucose. So, glucose, maltose, fructose, sucrose, all chemical name is same, but the source is different. All of them are simple carbohydrate or sugar molecule. Protein and fat break down by the activities of enzyme, right? Also the little absorption is, or absorption is occur, expect and accept the alcohol. And pastelsis propel the bolus into the small intestine, liver, gallbladder, pancreas and small intestine digest the enzyme and break down the 
bigger carbohydrates called starch or protein or fat into the small molecules like carbohydrate or starch is break down to glucose protein is break down to amino acid and fat is break down to triglyceride most macronutrient minerals vitamins and some fluid are absorbed at this point in the small intestine and produce the digestive um, and produce produce of digestion and they are absorbed through the bili or bilas into the bloodstream right and carry out in that our circulatory system so peristalsis moving the remaining component of food. So like food in your mouth, then food go down through the esophagus by peristalsis movement. Then food go from stomach to the duodenum by peristalsis movement. Then food go from small intestine to large intestine by the process of peristalsis movement. Absorption of most of the fluid produced by digestion and some electrolyte occurs where in colon or re and rectum. And remaining bulk is expelled out from your body as a stool or fecal materials, basically. And here, the picture showing what I explained a few minutes ago. Now go most important water, right? So water is the also very important nutrient for the human. So we have to know the recommended intake per day. We have to know sensible or insensible fluid loss, and also who is at the highest risk of dehydration or sign of dehydration, right? So first of all, go here. Um, first of all, go the, what are the normal, what are the function? of water better to finish this one and just let me read water is essential for the life account i mean um, account for 55 to 60 percent of the body weight is average adult female is water 60 to 65 percent adult man is made by the water 65 to 70 percent of full term newborn or infant made by water right and is a major component of the blood and urine so basically blood contain water and blood corpuscle called red blood cell white blood cell and platelet but the liquid portion is plasma and plasma contain the water urine contain water but with the waste materials and help to eliminate from the body and prevent azotemia or uremia by the kidney each individual cell of each organ is depends on water for optimal functioning right what are the normal function of the water? First of all, it's very important for your life. Maintaining the body temperature, blood pressure maintaining, also flushing out, expel out the toxic materials from the body. They carry out the nutrient all over the body through the blood to the cell for metabolism. They lubricate your ENT, 
E for ear, N for nose, T for throat and mouth. What are the recommendation intake? So most commonly recommended, most commonly I said intake should be 1,500 to 2,500 milliliter over 24 hour. Or if you make it easy, some books say it, two to three liters. It is two, two, three liter per day. Or some books say 1,500 to 2,500 milliliter over 24 hours. Same thing. It is liter, it is milliliter. One liter equal to 1,000 milliliter. All right? Always remember how much we fluid we intake, our output should be equal. So minimum intake if if minimum intake is 1.5 liter per day for body functioning, intake should approximately match to the output. And sensible fluid loss can be measured like urine, vomiting, insensible fluid loss, including fluid loss from the lungs, through the skin or water excreted in stool or feces is called insensible. Old adult or children are at the high risk of dehydration. Very important for your exam. So old people or children are the higher risk of dehydration. Also, NCLEX board sometimes asks, what are the sign of dehydration? The sign of dehydration usually poor skin trigger, confusion, hypotension, decrease the urine output, increase the urine osmolarities, dry mucous membrane and patient feel thirsty. What are the factor affecting the fluid needs or demand? What are the factor like activities or exercise, exertion, you need more fluid, healthy status, disease, fluctuating intake or decrease the fluid, fever, vomiting, diarrhea, or infection, you need more fluid. Aging, the very young man or elder may have lower the needs, size, increase the size, increase the need. Body fat required more water than lean muscle. High environmental temperature, you must need more, right? Otherwise, you'll be go for dehydration. So to prevent the dehydration, you need rehydrated by intake fluid. Pregnant mother need more. Lactating mother need more. So body function require the protein. So what are the condition or when our body need protein, right? So protein produce the energy or when body need energy produce or produce the energy then or heat, we need protein or body when need the build the new tissue, we need protein. Men, uh, manufacture of hormones, enzyme, antibody. So protein is the important component of your, your enzyme, your protein, your uh, antibody and 
hormone, so you need protein. And maintain the acid-base balance, also need protein. Assist to maintain the fluid balance between cell and blood stream, right? So what are the function of protein in the body? They support your tissue building. They are important in metabolism. They are important in immune system. They maintain nitrogen balance and also important for wound healing protein. No, now nitrogen balance, what we already finished, but here it's talking a little bit more. I want to recap it. Ingested nitrogen must balance with the level of nitrogen utilized by the body. So nitrogen, what we use or output and input should be equal. And this is called normal positive and nitrogen balance. Positive nitrogen balance or negative nitrogen balance should be equal, right? For every one gram of urinary nitrogen excreted, 6.25 gram of protein must be ingested. So positive, go next page. They're talking about the positive nitrogen balance, positive nitrogen balance and negative nitrogen balance. Positive nitrogen balance occur during the period of growth or like childhood, puberty, pregnancy, or lactation. So body need more protein. Negative nitrogen balance indicate the influence, I mean insufficient protein intake, like due to the illness, malnutrition, aging, so the patient is using protein faster than it is being synthesized. This is called negative nitrogen balance. So here now go um, here, amino acid. So amino acid, I said they, when you, if you eat protein, after when protein is break down, we produce amino acid. Or when amino acid is combined together, they make protein. Go this picture. This is the amino acid, small molecule. When amino acid put together and make a chain, this is called peptide. And peptide, make a coil and this is protein. So when protein break down, we can get amino acid. When amino acid put together, we can make protein. So go here, nine essential amino acid and also some of the non-essential. So essential amino acid, Basically, uh, most important and must be obtained from the food and also must be obtained from the food and body is unable to produce them. So we have to intake through the food. But non-essential amino acid produced by the liver, not essential in the diet and conditional amino acid some become essential only when the individual is a trace or ill with a certain condition. Now go next here, complete and incomplete protein. So complete protein, what is it? Complete protein means contain the sufficient amount of nine essential amino acid. So the food, the food contain the all essential amino acid, they are called complete protein. 
a source of complete protein are animal source like meat, fish, egg, milk product, or soya, beef, pork, animal source. Incomplete protein means can be combined to make a complete protein or, or they are lacking some amino acid. The found in nut, corn, beans, seed, and rice. So plant source, the plant source here. Yeah. And what next? Incomplete a protein, basically commonly used the combination of complete protein. Or I said when incomplete protein make together, they can make the complete protein, like red beans with brown rice. If you mixturing in this two, then make the complete protein. Peanut butter with a white bread, or brown beans with a cornbread, make a complete protein. And here, cholesterol function. So cholesterol function means cholesterol from the fat, right? From fat, I say, So uh, from each of the body cell membrane of every system. So it is not, I mean, the source of cholesterol is the fat, but it is not true. The cholesterols are always bad because cholesterol is the important component of the cell. You, your cell must need cholesterol, but up to certain level. And some of the cholesterol is good for the body and they are called HDL, means high density lipoprotein. They are good cholesterol because they carry the bad cholesterol from heart to peripheral tissue. But some cholesterol are really bad for your body. They are called LDL, means low density lipoprotein. They are bad because they carry the bad cholesterol from peripheral tissue to the heart and causes atherosclerosis. And atherosclerosis is uh, lead to the heart failure. So the produce, the adrenal and sex hormone also, the cholesterol can produce the adrenal and sex hormone, right? Sex hormone is very important. How important you can realize it, right? So protect our nerves, convert the sunshine to the vitamin D. So sunlight, convert to vitamin D in presence of cholesterol in your skin. Also, help to the metabolize the fat soluble vitamin. So there are two types of vitamin, water soluble and fat soluble. So fat soluble vitamin is not work if, you're, if you do not have fat in your body. Okay, so here, next. Categories of fat. Some are trans fat, like low density lipoprotein, saturated fat, like low density lipoprotein, dietary cholesterol, low density lipoprotein, monosaturated fat, may lower LDL, saturated, unsaturated fat, and fully unsaturated fat. They are uh, type of fat. What are the normal? function of fat, the function of fat, they store the energy in the body, they provide the insulation, also important for hormone production or absorption of fat soluble vitamin, right? So next here, what are the source of simple carbohydrate? Source of simple carbohydrate are fruits, 
milk, table sugar, syrup, candy, and soda. They are the source of simple carbohydrate. Now go, what are the source of complex carbohydrate? Complex, right? Potato, rice, pasta, broccoli, corn, or beans. I believe you do not, I do not need to explain. Everybody understand what it is. Some fiber. So food contain the fibers, right? So here we said uh, source of the soluble fiber and what are the source of insoluble fiber. So fiber help to uh, movement of our pestalsis system. So fiber can prevent the constipation. So the soluble fiber source are oatmeal, beans, then rice bean, barley, citrate fruits like lemon, be all kind of berries. Okay, and insoluble fat containing food are white cereal, then barley, rice, ray, also all kind or others gain, cabbage, beet, carrot cauliflower, all are insoluble fiber. So what are the function of fiber in the body? What are the normal function of the fiber? So the function of the fiber decrease the low density lipoprotein or bad cholesterol decrease promote the normal bowel function, increase the bowel and prevent constipation, increase the absorption of minerals, also lower the colon pH also, which help to discourage the pathogen, right? And also they prevent cancer development support the GI tract normal flora by providing them with the, with the food source and so promote the weight loss, right? But I said weight loss is not good, but if you overweight, weight loss definitely good, right? So if I said like five, 3,500 calorie, can provide one pound. So two, I mean, two lose one pound a week, you need to decrease the daily calorie by 500 calories. Like if your patient lose the weight, what you has to tell your patient, I mean, patient education or teaching, they has to monitor or monitor the hunger on one to 10 scale before eating. Also certain food should not be forbidden. Weight loss will not be constant. Weight will fluctuate most of the patient and do not weight yourself daily. When you teach your patient, you have to tell and make the lifelong with temperature change because sometimes because of changing the temperature, also weight should be fluctuate, right? So next here, they said water soluble and fat soluble vitamins here and also what are soluble vitamin? The vitamin like vitamin C, B complex, like B1, B2, B3, B6, or B12, all of water soluble. Fat soluble vitamin are vitamin A, D, E, and K, right? So the 
vitamin who are soluble in the water water soluble so absorbed directly into the blood stream and also cannot be stored must be intake through the food every day but fat soluble or absorbed from the small intestine then go to body right and can be stored when intake is more but if you take more vitamin it's called hypervitaminosis if you take less vitamin you will be malnutrition or malnourished go here who they are water soluble like b1 other name is called thiamine b2 other name is called riboflavin b3 other name is called niacin b6 other name is called pyridoxin b12 other name is called cyanocobalamin and vitamin c also there are some vitamin called pentothenic acid biotin and folate the source of water soluble vitamin are cereal grains meat egg fish and citrus fruit so like b1 deficiency called berry berry b2 riboflavin they are very important for chemical reaction in the body b3 is important for cholesterol absorption they prevent to cholesterol formation in the body at the night b6 prevent neuro peripheral neuropathy and b12 prevent pernicious anemia and vitamin c prevent scar be developed and fat soluble vitamin a d e and k fat soluble vitamin have a risk of toxicity if you take too much so fat soluble vitamin is found in the green leafy vegetables dairy product carrots and liver very colorful foods right so the condition that impaired the absorption of fat soluble vitamin in the body one of the disease is called cystic fibrosis or celiac disease or corn disease so cystic fibrosis celiac disease and corn disease they impaired the absorption of fat soluble vitamin so now go here what are the normal function of b complex vitamin right what are the normal function of b complex so the b vitamin function they serve as a coenzyme for metabolism they stimulate the appetite maintain the nervous and infragumentary system right so the function in the body they are important for metabolism also important role in energy or nerve function right and what are the source of b complex already you know that but i want to recap like milk or meat grains legumes green leafy vegetables are the source of vitamin b and then go the vitamin c right vitamin c immune system function or absorption of iron and also wound healing and vitamin c deficiency they can cause the scurvy right 
and what next? Next is here. So go here and here, antioxidant. So some of the vitamin contained some of the elements, they can prevent the free radical formation in the body. When they prevent the free radical formation in the body, right? And this is called antioxidant. So the source of anti or antioxidant are, are beta carotene, lycopene, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, or other substance. So here I said vitamin C. So what are the normal function of vitamin C? Tissue building, metabolism, and iron absorption. Don't miss it, iron absorption. The source of vitamin C are citrus food or some juices, tomato, green leafy vegetables and papayas. Deficiency of vitamin C can cause the scurvy. So this is the scurvy. You see, deficiency of vitamin C, the gum is swollen, bleeding occur, and echimosis, blood uh, accumulate under the skin. Also, the tongue smooth. Deficiency of vitamin C causes the scurvy. So bleeding occur, joint pain, soul and gum. Also in, increase the intake during the time of stress. If you go under the stress, you have to increase the vitamin C. If you ill, you have to increase the vitamin C. Also keep in mind who are doing the smoke, means smoker need more vitamin C, right? And go back here, uh, and all of this is called antioxidant, right? Vitamin A is a source of antioxidant. So vitamin A, most important for vision health, eye, also, they are important for skeletal and soft tissue development or strength, vitamin A. So the source of vitamin A are orange or yellow fruits, vegetables like cantaloupe, apricot, fatty fish, egg, liver, or some dietary product is the source of vitamin A. So I told you, if anybody deficiency of vitamin A, the vision, I mean, vision tissue will be damaged and patient can develop xerophthalmia. Xerophthalmia means dry or thicken the conjunctiva and cornea. Xerophthalmia, deficiency of vitamin A, Develop, develop the xerophthalmia, right? The other vitamins called E, they are important antioxidant. The function of vitamin E, they are, I said antioxidant. What is antioxidant? Protect the cell from damage or to formation free radicals. The source of vitamin E are fat containing food like vegetable oils, nut, dark green vegetables, whole grains, and deficiencies can cause muscle pain, weakness, or poor balance, right? Additional roles of vitamins, blood clotting. So blood clot, right? They, it is vitamin K, 
key is important role of blood clot. The function in the body, vitamin K cause blood clot formation or bones maintenance. The source of vitamin K, vitamin K, dark green vegetables, carrot and eggs. If anybody deficiency of vitamin K increase the bleeding time. So vitamin K is a antidote for warfarin, right? Also vitamins have the role synthesize the hemoglobin, bones and collagen tissue formation, new tissue growth and repair, also nerve impulse conduct here. And now go uh, the major and minor trace element. Major and minor trace element, right? So first of all, the major trace element, the presence in the amount, um, amount greater than five grams, greater than five grams, like calcium, phosphorus, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. They are major elements. In my another lecture, I already explained calcium, phosphorus, sodium, potassium. All I explained you and also I send you the record and it is super important for NCLEX board. I'm not going to details about this electrolyte right now. And trace elements are presence in the amount of five gram or less, like iron, iodine, zinc, then, um, then fluoride, copper, and selenium, right? Iron, major function in the body used to make hemoglobin, iron, important component of red blood cell. The source of iron are meat, fish, gains, or legumes. Keep in mind the side effect of excess iron can cause constipation. If patient have the constipation, you have to educate your patient, increase the increase intake of fiber and fluid. Also, excess iron can cause GIT upset or tooth discoloration. If patient take the iron, tell them to take the iron with a straw. And clicks would ask this question. And vitamin C increase the absorption of iron. And when we give the iron injection, use the Z tract, it's called zigzag method for intramuscular injection. Iodine, the second one. Iodine, important function in the body used to synthesize thyroxine or thyroid hormone. And source is called table salt or seafood. Zinc, the function of the body in the zinc, immune function. The source of zinc are nut, meat, fortified cereal, and beans. The fluoride at the important body function are protect again cavities formation in teeth. Source is a water. Copper and cereal is the important component for your skin and here, right? And what next? Function of the minerals. The function of the minerals provide the structure to the bones, teeth, and nails. 
assess the fluid balance and acid base balance, regulate the nerve cell transmission and muscle contraction and relaxation. Also assist in activation of vitamins, enzyme and hormones. And here the nutritional deficiencies and excess. So protein deficiency can cause quashiocor. Excess fat called overweight or obesity. And obesity can cause heart disease, kidney problem. Excess carbohydrate, overweight and obesity. Mineral deficiency so many complications start and also their important component of metabolism. Vitamins deficiency causes malnutrition or excess called hypervitaminosis. And this is the picture showing protein malnutrition. Some of the patient have good amount of protein but not adequate I mean, the source of protein is good, but not amount is good. Some of the patient has a amount is good, but not a good quality protein. So if the patient has a quality, quantity or qualitative deficiency, they can develop marasmus or quashiacord. And here the picture showing the scurvy that we already shown and this is the vitamin C deficiency, right? Vitamin C deficiency. And here the picture showing the berry berry. This is the deficiency of vitamin B, right? B, especially the thiamine. So when the deficiency of thiamine or B1, it is called berry berry. Common in those who take alcohol intake, right? So alcohol use disorder. The person who alcohol intake too much, their vitamin B1 absorption is impaired and they develop the very, very, right? So another vitamin is called riboflavin or B2. Riboflavin deficiency called chilosis or stomatitis, okay? And deficiency of folate, they causes neural tube defect. So, so I said the deficiency of Thiamine causes the berry berry. But usually the patient who have deficiency of berry berry, uh, thiamine or berry berry, they gave a history of alcohol absorption, uh, intake or disorder. So who take the too much alcohol, the thiamine absorption will be impaired. And deficiency of thiamine causes the berry berry. Right. The other uh, defect is called here the stomatitis. If the deficiency of riboflavin, riboflavin deficiency in the human, they cause a group of disorder, oral and facial, like angular stomatitis. You can see angle of the mouth, and also glossitis. Uh, the problem on the stomach or chilosis. Chilosis means crack, uh, crackles at the corner of the mouth and glossitis means smooth and swollen red tongue. Smooth and swollen red tongue. And angular stomatitis means this is look like erosion on the angle of the mouth, right? So, here, and this one, the neural tube defect, deficiency of folate. So deficiency of folate can develop 
the neural tube defect. And here, the deficiency of cobalamin or B12, B12, they causes infertility, hypothyroidism, or depression, even impair the cognitive function, low energy, patient feel numbness or abnormal sensation on the periphery. And also deficiency of cobalamin causes the pernicious anemia. So pernicious anemia more accurately, if I say it, the deficiency of intrinsic factor of castle in the stomach so vitamin B12 does not absorb because of intrinsic factor deficiency in the stomach and patient develop the pernicious anemia. Also, uh, deficiency of cobalamin affect the strict, uh, the who is strictly vegetarian or those lacking the intrinsic factor of Kessel knee uh, they develop pernicious anemia, so they need for absorption of vitamin B12. So this is the disease causes the deficiency of different vitamins. So go next here. So now nutrition need, who need more nutritional substance? First of all, the growing is like taller or preschool or is uh, preschool age children or school age children adolescents. So when body demand is increased, growing the cell, growing the body, they need more nutrient. Pregnant mother or lactating mother, they need more nutrient. Even old person, they need nutrient because their capacity or absorption capacity go down. So they need supplement of nutrient or vitamins, right? Now go, what are the food levels here? So food and energy content macronutrient content, vitamins, mineral. When we go to buy some food, we have to read the food levels. And what we have to read, what are the food and energy content in the food? What are the macronutrient content? What are the different vitamins and mineral content? Right? And also any spe special need we to read. So some dietary choice influencing by the culture, right? So like African-American, they may use a lot of saturated fat for cooking. Diet usually are rich in mustard, some yam, beans, and also more pork or fish than beef a lot of spices, spicy also like Indians and Cuba, Cuba, I mean Mexican peoples, herbs like Chinese people, Japanese, they like some herbs, right? And also here, Latino American, that diet specially con, um, concentrate in the heavy spices. The Latino American, they like it. Also, a good amount of vegetables, gains, beans, and fruits, nerve and legumes they like, fish and seafood, seafood as well. And here the dietary choice by culture, geographically like Mediterranean style. So I said in Europe, one of the river is called Mediterranean Sea. The people who is close to li uh, living over the Mediterranean, so they are called Mediterranean mm -hmm. culture. So they like too much uh, fever beans and fever beans also cause some kind of genetic disease. So 
the centred amount, a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, they like beans, seed and nut, some cereals. Also, low to moderate size serve of poultry, pork, and also uh, red meat. Some Jewish peoples, they like some special kind of food and they do not like to some particular kind of food eat together. So must be killed and prepared according to their culture specific and all blood removed from the meat before cooked. Milk and meat cannot be prepared using the same. Uh, yes. yes. Milk and meat also must be kept separate and never eat pork, right? And also only eat certain meat, fish with uh, fins, and also cloven, whole feet, animals, or limited fuels, uh, 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 species they like. Asian, American, they, what they like, varies based on, they are, I mean, the who are Asian, Chinese, Cambodian, Vietnamese, Japanese, Thai people, they use less saturated fat than American. Usually eat less beef or more fish or shellfish. Protein often comes from soya product or nut, legumes and seed. What next? They like more gains, right? Corn, rice, and a lot of fruits and vegetables they like to eat. And milk products are usually they like to drink as well. And here some Muslim American, what they like, they like to maintain the dietary by their religious book, usually eat meats specially. Um, for the food and no meat that die. So they do not uh, eat if the animals is die before. No alcohol, a lot of yogurt, date, grabs, legumes, right? So fruits and vegetables they prefer to, like others. Also, they like the nut, bread or salad and fasting also the part of their religions. So this is the chapter for now about the nutrition, okay? So 